oh god i'm so sleepy <laughs> it's really late in the day on our weekday and i really need to be going to bed but instead of going to bed let's just cast this game because i i don't know better <laughs> oh but speaking of casting um let me just do something during this loading screen so i'll be right back do, do need to get this come here oh never mind okay I thought I did I thought I forgot to do something but turns out I didn't I got a discord ping what the hell all right but we're already for the loading screen here to finish get rid of the three minute delay Malphite Yasuo top lane this is a lane that Malphite should like uh, it's very hard for Yasuo to kill him at all stages of the game. He can just stack armor, but can he stack armor against the Cassidy <laughs> uh, versus Diana matchup? Zack against Nunu? Sona MF? Oh, this is a game that Malphite would have very much liked to stack armor, but Cassidy exists. But maybe he can stand the burst regardless. We'll see. Is Ashra also a Sona with fleet footwork uh, over Airy? Which is an interesting choice. I I can't think of any support other than maybe Senna that will choose to run Fleet for work and Green Subtree. But the rest of the rune setups here, pretty standard uh, overall, I say. Everyone's uh, looking nice and ready to rumble. It's also like a minute and fifty seconds into the recording and. We're just now getting started with this game. All right, we're gonna get into it. When uh, the spectator delay ends, what is that health bar? Like that health bar always appears um, at the start of every game. It looks like a minion's health bar. Is that where minions come from? <laughs> like they start at a position zero zero or something, and then it gets added later on. Because why would there be a mini health bar on a fountain? Does it normally have that health bar? No, it doesn't. You can't even click on fountains anymore. You used to be able to in um, earlier seasons. I think like season one, you could definitely click, uh, click on the fountain. Nowadays, you can't do it anymore. If I remember correctly, clicking on the fountain showed that it had like 100 HP, but you couldn't target or damage it in any way, and it just had a 1,000 true damage laser. Interesting stuff. Pretty standard opening here, no anyway, no cheese. Everyone's just uh, behaving nice, like children. Minions just gonna wait for the minions and buffs to start spawning. I'm gonna take a sip of my water. Refreshing. Alright, the buffs have spawned. We're getting into the game. Both opting for a red side jungle start or boss side jungle start. So, we are gonna get into this game proper now. Very standard opener all around. Oh, but they actually did do a lane swap here. Cassidy moving topside to answer the Malphite, hopefully getting a better matchup here. Which I do like, the attack speed slow from Malphite and just the fact that he synergizes the armor in general can definitely ruin the Yasuo's day. Kassadin has much better luck against him. It's a much more favorable matchup for the Kassadin. And Yasuo wouldn't mind fighting a Diana either. So pretty good lane swap decision now here from blue team overall. Definitely uh, save the Astro from being screwed over, but Malphite's coming in for some aggressive trades. He doesn't have Grasp, and <laughs> Kassadin is sitting there tanking and forgetting that Ground Slam is a pretty hefty attack speed cripple. <laughs> he just, actually just stood there and started tanking hits like a man. It was a very awkward trade pattern. I don't think Malphite should ever go for trades like that unless he has Grasp. It's a very aggressive auto-based trading, and his common is not going to be used for that fight. Here comes the Nunu though, he's gonna roll a big snowball, 
The spell ball will crash into the server. Server did not level the spell shield, and that's gonna result in her death. Easy first blood picked up by the Nunu. Assists going over to every member of the bot lane. Off to a pretty good start. Ooh, can't miss. Castle though doesn't miss it. Malphite is actually out of mana. Yeah, that's one of the massive drawbacks of Malphite. Your mana pool is non-existent, essentially until you get Shroud. But here's Diana. She's getting ganked. Is she gonna flash away? But it's not enough. Nunu takes two tower shots. Yasuo takes the third. No one dies except Diana. Very good early movements by the Nunu so far, making his name known across the entire map, terrorizing everybody. Top lane is gonna be his next stop, but he's gonna run into a Zac. He is being pinged out. Malphite is pushed up in this lane, but he's very low on mana. He has like one ground slam left in his arsenal, and he just used it. <laughs> okay, well, if Zac gets into trouble like he is now, they might not be able to get there in time. He lasts like slingshot, perfect timing, gets him out just in the nick of time. And Malphite is actually trying to rotate into the river. What is he doing? He needs to get out. It's not a fight he can stay in. Diana has actually come back, but that's a very, very beefy Nunu. Diana does not have Moonfall. She can't pull them back in. They can't take this trade, so everyone will back off. Yeah, so having claimed the kill, spent most of that advantage time jerking around in the river. Not the best use of his time, I must say. Now Diana's back to lane. Essentially no worse for wear, because Yasuo basically did nothing with that lead. But the Nunu is here for a return gank. Luna rushes down, and so is Flash. Uh, Yasuo tornadoes backwards, but it's not going to be enough. Diana pounces on him full force. She wants to get a kill, and she does actually. This gank finally fails. Nunu has to also flash away from the Zack counter gank, and that is a pretty large mini wave. Yasuo cannot collect it, so Zack sweeps up the cannon. And, well, not Zack, Nunu sweeps up the cannon and walks away. Diana's gonna push this in. No, the teleport is coming in from the Yasuo. He's gonna actually clean up this minion wave. If you finish Berserker Greaves, that's a rush item. So now he's working with a time war attack speed in his arsenal. Diana has to go back. She did get one kill. There was a desperate charge into the Yasuo that worked out in her favor. What can she buy with this money? She wants the Roba. She is going to go for the Ruby Crystal. And a Pink Word. Now seems like the call is to get Drake going for red team, blue team highest backed uh, for their bot lane. And Nunu is jungling topside. Is he taking blue? Oh my god, that's hilarious. He never killed blue buff. <laughs> and it's, it's 5 minutes and 50 seconds. He never even killed his first blue. The red team gonna secure this Drake. Bot lane missing, being pinged out by blue team. But they realize a little bit too late. Castle going really hard. On the Malphite, but Cassidy is not level. Well, here she is. Wait, he's actually a whole level above this Malphite? How did that happen? But now Malphite is being dove, and that is an easy, easy kill. Riftwalk not even required to get out of that one. But Diana is here. She's putting some aggression on the Yasuo, but there's so many minions hitting her. She can't win that trade in a prolonged session, and Yasuo carrying such a healthy CS lead. Cassidy actually hits level 6 when Malphite was level 4. He leveled up under tower. What the heck happened in that lane? How did it go so bad? Malphite did go back for components of a Tabai. Or maybe Bami Sinner or Sunfires. Whatever it is. But it's sure not the correct item to be building against a Cassidy. He gets his Blasting one and his Tear. Diana does get the solo kill on Yasuo. But Nunu has made his way down. He's not going to be able to do much. Diana is starting to roll now. She's not doing too well in the CS department, but she is sure stronger than the Yasuo at this particular moment in time. This matchup is quite favorable for Diana once you can get rolling, because the attack speed steroid means you can trade blows against them very easily. Leona hiding out in the brush. It's not worded, but there's also like 9 minions hammering bot. So Leona can't go for any sort of aggressive play. Unless she uh, unless she's actively inviting the Sivir to take a lot of damage. But Sivir is still going for it. They broke the minion aggro and Zac pounces his way in. Misfortune escapes from the Zac grab. But Sona is left alone in the alcove. She is gonna be the victim here. MF flashes forward. She wants to get the kill on MF. Uh, Sivir, I mean, she, and MF does kill off the Sivir. But Nunu is here, absolute zero, being channeled out. 
the blob, not enough time to elastic slingshot away, and the rest of his tiny slime balls will get cleaned up. Nunu coming in for a turnaround, 3 for 1 trade, support being the only casualty in that fight. And MF will happily take that any day. Level 6. Uh, level 6 Malphite. But against the level 7 Cassidy, he sure is being slapped around in that lane for a fair bit. The tornado does miss and move how comes out. Diana's going hard for it. The tiny ball comes over. That little knockout buying Yasuo the time to make his last breath happen. And that is a counter kill pulled off on Diana. Cannot feel good when that happens to you. This Nunu is actually winning the early game single handedly for blue team. A very terrifying, terrifying threat. Zack does come over, he wants to be a hero, he grabs two carries, tries to make them kiss each other, and they do. Not enough damage to actually finish anybody off. Zack's are gonna sit here and clean out some minions. He needs to hit level 6 here. Nunu's already level 7. There's such a huge level lead from blue team, not even counting the massive gold lead that somehow they've accrued, but they're just so much, so much more ahead in levels too. Not something you can discount. Like MF is level 6, but then again, so is Silver. Bali, le Bali levels are actually tied just because Silver has such a healthy CS lead. But the rest of the lane could definitely doing better. Diana actually full on flashes in. That's not a really good idea against Cassidy, but she can finish off that kill very easily. Rift walk cooldown, not short enough to make that escape happen. And a very confident in her ability, is flashing forward to confirm the kill. Nunu rolling a snowball down for what seems like the fourth time. It was actually the third, maybe. I lost count. Leona gets a beautiful stun on the Nunu that's gonna let the silver flash away. Flash is used, but at least it wasn't a death. And Diana has her catalyst finish, but still, no AP items aside from a dark seal. They have actually swapped lanes. They should have done this a while back. But now Malphite with his tab is complete. <laughs> is going to uh, have some alone time with the Yasuo. The EQ misses from the Yasuo. Now Malphite and Diana are both really behind in CS, but maybe Malphite will actually be able to find some farm now in a more favorable lane matchup. Last breath does come now. Oh, Malphite, he's not as fed as he wants to be. One more auto will do it, but Unstoppable Force comes down. Beautiful turnaround. Zack crashes down as well. Malphite living with a sliver of health. Quite a lucky play. Yeah, it was a beautiful stutter on the CC, making sure the asshole couldn't make that one last auto to kill off the Malphite. But here comes the bullet time, Zack is so low, he's gonna flash away, but the Sona Q chases after him and kills him off. No blobs available. And the siege begins on mid lane, no unstoppable force and no health on Malphite, they had to back off from here. And they do. Bot lane pulls every member to mid just to grab a plate. So bot lane is going to answer with their own. They are going to make the rotate into dragon, but this is a 2v3 if bot, team uh, bot lane decides to go for it from rest side. They are scouting around. They want to make this happen. They're going on Sona, but Sona crescendo is back. Two man stun. They're just buying Nunu time to hit the dragon, and he does. He kills the dragon. Are they going to retreat? No, they're going to turn it back around. Nunu rolling the snowball in. He's going to try to crash it into the server. Will he get it? He does get it, but it gets spell shielded away. Boomerang Blade comes back. Slicing through the team, dissuading them from continuing with this tomfoolery. Cassidy swapped his way mid because they really want to make this lane matchup happen. Yasuo goes back top to fight against the Diana once again. On the hunk gets popped. Sona is alone. She gets slowed up by the Zack Q. She no longer has crescendo. So she's going to sit there and recall into the sunlight. There is the ignite killing off the Yasuo solo kill for the Diana. She is getting truly, well and truly rolling now. 4 and 2. And the Yasuo fulfilling the meme of being a feeder. 2 and 4 so far in this game. Definitely the weak link of his team so far. Malphi is getting pounced on. He has to flash away from the Ignite. Nunu actually flashes in. What is he doing? Does he think he have it? No, absolute zero. Not even finding the target. So that is Nunu ultimate and flash down. Getting absolutely nothing out of it. In fact, zero damage was dealt as a result of that entire sequence. But Kassan has returned to this matchup. He knows. Oh, that was a beautiful cancel on the Elastic Slingshot. Zack is now in the middle of the team. He no longer has a way to get out. Kassadin is trying to go on Malphite, but both of them somehow miraculously make it out because there was just no target focus whatsoever. Malphite is actually going to greet and overstay, but Kassadin must know he's built nothing but armor. He can rip through this guy like wet paper. He 
granted Tabai isn't useless against the cast and it doesn't negate damage on his W and negates damage on his autos, which is not an insignificant part of uh, the most of his damage, but Riftwalk chunks and uh, Nether Orb chunks, those are not easy things to negate with no MR. And Malphite is actually not dissuaded, he's still going forward, finishing off Sunfire's Cape, but here comes the Yasuo. The combo goes down to Diana, Lunar rush back, beautiful juke, but does she have to move out? She does not, it is almost up. They're still gonna try to continue with that dive, and meanwhile, bot lane, Crescendo finds on the two. The stun and the bullet time kills off the Zac, he is being blowed up, Silver is so low, she gets critted down. And now Leona has to try to run, one more bullet will finish her off, Emma flashes after her, gets the double. This is gonna be a triple, but Sona picks that one kill. Beautiful turnaround, Zack not as fed as he, he, is, uh, he thinks he is, and Miss Fortune guns down Silver at the start of the fight, handily winning it. Because after uh, Silver goes down, Red Team runs on the damage there. The dive up top didn't actually work, Diana is actually safe and sound, but can't say the same for bot lane, that is for sure. Terra plating falls, and that means first tower, soon to follow. There are several towers, very critical on health. Now that the Herald has been killed and the Snowball rolling top lane, Nunu is gonna want one of his own. He's gonna try to kill Diana here. If he does do it, that's gonna be a free Herald drop. She does turn it around, move on onto two. That's a solid amount of damage, but it's not enough. Three men up top. Malphite very slow on the rotation. That's gonna be a Herald drop. That's gonna be first tower. This is a three man push. Malphite can't possibly stop this. He has to try to back off for now. He's still going for him with Sunfire Escape. <laughs> oh no. You're not even you're not even looking at the Yasuo at this point, buddy, but he does commit an unstoppable force. They kill off the Yasuo first. That is a significant chunk of the damage just gone. Can they kill off this Herald before it makes a second charge? They do smite it. One more hit will do it. It does kill the Herald during their charge. Very close to disaster. Balain answers the turret bot, but their mid is soon to follow. This is a two-man siege and it will pay off here. No unstoppable force anymore. They get this turret. They're gonna run away. Leona roams her way up, but a little bit too slow on the draw. Blue team bot lane, safe and sound, making their way out. Now we have the game farming up again. Red team really wants to continue the siege. They need to kill off this mid tower. But the Rapunzel arriving there, dismayed to find it at full health. Because the Diana and later Malphite did jack all to push back against their lane matchups. And still losing massively in CS. Now Diana for her early kills and early power getting solos on the, getting solo kills left and right really needs to start finding additional picks and finding more ways to contribute. Because uh, with a stagnating scoreline, is not what you want to see uh, from a character like Diana. You do need to get rolling a lot faster and start exerting a lot more pressure than this. She does need to find a good fight. Dragon is up in 7 seconds. Every member now converging. Except the Malphite, who doesn't even have teleport. He's just not, not, he's just not showing up. So that's not good news. Zack gets caught out. Bullet time gets committed, but... Zack is nowhere near death. Elastic Slingshot will get him out of there, which means that he has no more tools to go back in. Crescendo whiffs completely. Four man move out from the Diana. That's a massive chunk, but do they have the follow up damage? Silver walks up a little bit too far up and gets dropped immediately, despite what seemed like a very promising fight. Uh, that was a 4v5. <laughs> so it definitely wasn't as destructive as it could have been. Was maybe if maybe Unstoppable Force was up, which by the way it just came up, it was not available in that team fight. But if Malphite was there to contribute some AOE, it might have been turned around. They did get a very excellent catch onto the Sivir when she walked up a little bit to try to get some damage off. But it's hard to tell if that fight could have actually been won by the red team. It did look bleak for them to win it. Just because they actually lack so much damage. Sivir needs a bit more time and a few more items to actually get rolling and to be that late game threat that can just hold back armies. Malphite definitely uh, just uses all to escape from a Cassidy, so that's not a very promising sight to see either. Diana does bring the damage, but it wasn't enough. She was the only one that was really safely outputting. As soon as Sivir tried to output anything in that fight, she just got uh, caught out by the last breath just because of her short range. Not being able to get in to do Ricochet after Boomerang Blade. 
But how's this game gonna pan out now? Red team does, in theory, have much superior team fighting, just thanks to Unstoppable Force, and thanks to uh, Moonfall and the existence of a Sivir and Leona. They have such a solid 5v5 core, but so far their lanes are just so far behind, it doesn't really matter. Beautiful streamline elastic slingshot. Is that enough to save the Malphite's life? No, it is not. The Riffhawk will claim the kill, but Sona is stranded. She will be the next victim by the Diana. The uh, movement speed only buys her a little bit of time, and Diana chases her down. And now two more stragglers stranded in red team jungle. They're gonna channel absolute zero in the fog. Zack knows this. He's gonna dive in face first anyway. He doesn't have blobs up yet. But this is a beautiful cash. The bullet time actually stopping so much damage. Leona might be the next victim here. Three man moonfall. That's a massive crash. But Diana is somehow alone in that fight. Silver flashes over. It says a 1v3. Zack has actually made his way back. He gets blobbed up. Nunu is so low. But Nunu eats a blob. He also have to almost have health. Silver does get killed off by the MF. So the Leona diving in is also suicide. Overall, when all said and done, a one, for, a two for four team fight actually, losing Sona and Cassidy, but killing off everyone except the Zack, who escapes off the back of being blobbed, so he actually didn't even die in that fight, but just doesn't count. But still, in theory, Red Team has the better team fighting. They're just so behind individually and just not cohesive enough that it doesn't even matter. Like these key team fight ultimates being committed on kills that you can't even guarantee. There's no way he can kill the Yasuo here. Yasuo will just run. And that is the Nasovo force for nothing. He's still building armor. He's working on he's working on gauntlet. The castle is your biggest problem here. You can't do that. Yasuo will kite you forever. Like uh, yeah he has to give up on that chase. <laughs> wow. Why would you stack so much armor in a game like this? When Nunu and Cassidy have been the ones cashing you out. You haven't even seen the MF in these team fights. Oh, but here comes a fight. Silver is being found in the mid lane. The root comes out from the Nunu. Absolute zero gets channeled. Solar Fred cancels it immediately. But Sona has the damage. The ignite takes off and burns her down. Silver will die. And that is so much damage from Blue Red Team just evaporating without so much as retaliation. Blue team gets another team fight victory, a crushing, crushing blow for red team, two for naught. Silver finds her sixth death this game, definitely a very rough game for the bot lane. Now, Unstoppable Force just now came up, but Nunu is so beefy of a front line. Now if I can't possibly dive this, Zack just got shot by like a billion bullets to the face. So he has to cut that off and go away. The saving grace for red team is that dragon is not up yet. But it will come up and they're gonna need to decide on what to do with it. The call made here may just be to give it up. But are they going to? If they conserve their team fighting ultimates, they could go for a wipe in dragon pit. It's still possible. They should definitely try it, especially when uh Blue team's all distracted hitting Dragon. If they shut down MF here, or if they shut down Nunu, or if they shut down even the Yasuo, or get an early kill on Cassidy, any of these could actually potentially swing a fight in their favor, but they just need to be there for it. Zack does scan out the Nunu, and he has to run now. Blue team has the inside position on Dragon. It seems the call from Red team is to just give it up. 23 seconds is not enough to set up for the Drake. The rule of thumb in general, you want to be at an objective 20 seconds before response. If it's any later, you already will not have a beneficial position. The one man at level 4 gets committed onto Yasuo, but there's so much other CC just gone. Moonfall is still available, but Diana is not even here. Nunu is in the middle of three people. Do they have the CC to hold him down in time? Sarah is getting free hits with Red Buff. The slow is coming down. Bullet time might be available soon. Bullet time is available now, but can they get it? So far, everyone is dying. Even Diana gets a solo kill onto Cassidy. A beautiful turnaround. A miracle team fight. This is exactly what they need. So far, 4 for 0. And now Sona, not long for this world. One more bullet. No, she does not actually die to the boomerang. I said bullet when I meant to say boomerang, but that is somehow a 4 for 0 team fight. A beautiful catch onto the Yasuo, starting that entire cascade. That's gonna give Red Team a breath of hope and a breath of life. They're going to convert this into some major victory. It seems like their call is Baron Nasher. 
A very risky call, but they're going for it. Everyone's actually so low, and now Yasuo's booking at full speed into the ta into the Baron Pit. But what can he do alone? He doesn't have time to build up queues in the middle of five people. Can he actually make kills happen? Nunu driving a snowball full speed. He has damage plate. He's so fast when he rolls a snowball, but Baron is also melting down. Can they zone him out fast enough? Red team does secure Baron Nasher, but can they get a clean retreat? Solar Flare lands on the Yasuo. Yasuo gets stunned, so he cannot last press. Bullet time whiffs, scoring a field goal. But now it's up to the retreat. Can they get a clean run away? Cassidy is here. The riff walks slow, and the force pulse is so much. Diana. Can't possibly get out, can she? Cassidy is still scanning her out. A few more rift walks out to do it. The force pulse does kill off Diana. So far, she is the only victim, but can they find more? Recalls are coming out left and right. Diana is the martyr here. She will be the only victim. Blue team gonna go for a retaliatory dragon. But red team is very content, securing a 4 for nothing out of nowhere, as well as Baron buff on 4. To top it all off, the desperate victory that they need, the beautiful 2 man ultimate, and misfortune just instantly melts, and now Cassidy is the next victim. He tries to run away, but he gets dragged back by the Zat Tendril. Sona is the next victim here. Beautiful long range Zenith Blade, one more stun will definitely guarantee it, but can they get it? One more Rift Walk will do it. R Elastic Slingshot, he's just jumping away so fast. Zenith Blade, yet again, getting the stun, several flashes over the wind while she's gonna try to go for the kill, but can she get it? This might be a mistake, and it is! They get turned around under the tower, there's no more damage left, they just have 10 cores, and Cassidy is beautiful as shredding tanks that can't hit back. The two for nothing gets converted into a two for three. A disastrous dive running face first into a Yasuo. And Malphite, the last member of the team still carrying Baron Buff, has to reset. Diana respawns. Doesn't prevent the dragon being taken. So while that entire shenanigan was happening, Blue Team has secured Drake and they are now at soul point. What can Red Team do? They have the tools to come back in this game. They have demonstrated their ability to out team fight blue team, but can they actually execute this? They made a miracle cash in mid lane and another miracle cash, but then soon turned into disaster. But they still have Baron Buff up for a little while. Hope is not lost. Can they group around this Malphite? Can they identify this is where they need to push? No, they are going to all split off and do their own thing. Trying to set up side waves, trying to make another push happen, perhaps. But right now, all members of red team very, very scattered. And blue team is relatively close together in comparison. They could try to make a catch happen. Nunu is rolling a snowball into mid lane. Can he find it? Nope. He doesn't find anything. Now the push has resumed, side lanes have been set up, it's gonna draw several people bot lane. In fact, so many people of blue team are rotating their way bot, which leaves mid lane quite open. It's just a cast in the MS Fortune, Sona is on her way back to reinforce. But the rest of the cores aren't here, their tank frontline isn't here, and neither is the Yasuo. Yasuo has decided on a split push pass, he is just turning away now. Crescendo gets committed to ward off a single Zac. Not the best use of that CC, but here comes the teleport and Nunu is gonna find 5 people, can he get a beautiful absolute zero down? Bullet time gets immediately cancelled by the unstoppable force, but now they are in full retreat mode. That's their engaged CC being used to disengage. Which means Malphite turning into a living grenade gets blown up in the middle of blue team. The flash last breath is going to catch onto the Diana, she has to pop Zion's hourglass to stay safe. She's gonna try to turn it around, Moonfall is still up. She doesn't go for a drag yet, but she assassinates MF in the back line. Moonfall does come down. Sivir is dead in the back. So now it's just Cassidy and Nunu. But Cassidy is scary as hell when there's no damage left to kill him. Zach just immediately dips because there's no way he can take that fight. So Cassidy is going to take his easy triple kill. Can they actually hunt down the Zach as the last member? Overall, it's 3 for 4. Which isn't disastrous, all things considered, but you really hope for more. He does get the cut, he lets like Slingshot away, but uh, Kassan is not done, he's still giving pursuit. Zack stays and hits a mini, he discharges that man's plate! So that's gonna be so much movement speed lost, is that actually going to cause him to die? Yes it is. Oh, discharging his dead man's plate, losing 50 movement speed there. Might have actually gotten him killed, but now Kassan and I don't know what Malphite thinks he's doing, but... He's not building MR! <laughs> okay. In the loading screen, when I said you can stack armor against the Yasuo, I was kidding. You, you don't just stack armor because your lane, your desire lane matchup, not even the one you got, your design 
your desired matchup of his armor and your kid skills of armor, you gotta buy an MR at some point, my dude. Especially when Cassidy is so fast and just ripping you a new butthole. Like, I was kidding when I said you can stack armor this game. I, I hope you realize that. Why would you get a storm mail? What the hell is a storm mail gonna do for you? Get like a mask or something. Get any MR. Because <laughs> this Cassidy is just ripping you apart. He has 25 stacks of Magi's. Oh, that is so incredibly scary. If Cassidy goes unkilled from this point, he can just wipe out Red Team. What the heck, man? It's not what I expected to see, honestly. He's stacking so much armor, yet he's so squishy. <laughs> oh, Zack's gonna get caught out. Fourth pause, the slow is so intense. Can he actually get out? One more rip out will do it. It's a level 16 Cassidy, so he's got so much mana. One more stab will do it. Legendary Cassidy, 12 and 3. Oh my, he just does so much damage. What does Red Team even have to kill him? Even if they land CC on Cassidy, can he even burst him at this point? Especially now that Drake is up, and now Red Team going for plays uh, on the side lanes. Yasuo actually absorbed so many boomerangs uh, with his stuff, but now blue team, did they just give up on the soul? Dragon is spawning now, maybe they should go for it. Nunu is actually making his way topside, Kazan is going to go for the soul by himself now, but Malphite is close behind, is he going to try to suicide dive in? Are they just going to give up the soul? Seems like the answer is yes, you can't fight this Kassadin. So Mountain Soul gets claimed by blue team. Red team has to realize all of their damage is coming from two people. Malphite exists to ult and then die because his items are so bad. He went for all the wrong items to build this game. Considering the people that have been strapping him all game has been Nunu and Cassidy, he's not trying to solve that dilemma at all but instead fortifying himself against threats that he's not even actively seeking out. So basically now the entirety of Red Team's damage is on two people, Diana and Sivir. If either of them, of them dies, and it's so easy for either of them to die against a team like Blue Team, they can't win anything from that point onwards. They need to find this miracle catch on the castle, they need to make a Hail Mary team fight and just throw everything they got at him and try to kill him off. They do have so much CC, like they could lock him down forever even through Riftwalk, but it's not gonna happen maybe. Silver Spell Shield, good Spell Shield eating up the Snowball. But that is gonna be a very dead Leona getting jumped on by the Kassadin. But that's a beautiful solar for onto two. Kassadin gets nuked down. That is exactly what they need to happen. Diana does die in a 1v3 on the side, but it doesn't matter. Silver is still alive. She's still contributing damage. Yasuo has to go back. He cannot contribute anymore. Leona also stays alive. And this team fight going so well for Red Team so far. It is almost a miracle. Silver is frontlining. There's no crescendo. Her spell shield absorbs one shot. One more will do it. Can Sona actually turn it around? No, she doesn't get the kill. Quadra kill for the Silver. Now they can make this push. Is this a GG push? No, it's not. But they can at least get an inhibitor. They could tr they could try to make something happen. They have to. Time is running out for them. They ripped out so many pages out of Magi Soul Slater sort of Cassidy, but he's still such a scary threat. They're going for a dry push, but it's so ineffective. Everyone is bleeding down. And now they ping out the Baron. I don't agree with that push if you're just gonna be fighting against back row protection. Just turn for this Baron immediately because now they probably can't do it. They're running out of damage. They don't have the tank stars to do it. S S Leona can't tank it. Silver definitely can't tank it. So now they're gonna walk away. Which means that blue team will rotate in and take the advantageous position. That siege took them way longer than they thought they would. And that's, that's honestly a disastrous call. When you could go for Baron, but you try to siege a turret with plus 300 armor. It's not gonna go well. It, it took them so long to kill T2 that they could have gotten a lot more, but they settled for the minimum. Silver is also getting more and more items. She's getting very close to that state where she could carry games just by herself. These ricochet in teamfights, not a joke at all. They need another miracle lockdown onto the castle. That last teamfight was amazing, but they just need to do it again. Can they do it again? It would be a wonderful underdog comeback story if they do, shutting down a massive Kassadin? Oh, 
the tornado does catch a Malphite, but it is the Malphite that did nothing but build armor. The cancels are going down onto the backline. Move on onto two. MF gets instantly deleted. And Yasuo has to retreat. He's so low. The Lunar Rush gets canceled, but the Q does not. And now where's the castle? He's coming up on the side. He's still so healthy. The CC are looking straight at him. Can he jump in? Can he do some massive damage? He does flash in, but he gets stunned up. That is a throw. What are you hoping to accomplish? He does try to riff walk away. He has a damage. He riff walks back. Instant double kill. One more will do it. Oh my god. Yeah, that will do it. When you comp up so much against a castle that's doing nothing but stacking roof lock. Yeah, that, that's going to do it. <laughs> that's legitimately a castle 1v5 pentakill. Honestly, like, yeah. The CC just were not there. They didn't have what it takes to nail him down. And now blue team takes Baron. <laughs> Sona doesn't get it, and MF doesn't get it. It's just on the Kassadin and the Nunu. Oh, but they're pushing now. Uh, Kassadin got all his stacks back in the blink of an eye. And this, the job of coming back into this game just got insurmountably harder. When Kassadin just went ahead and did that to your whole team. Ooh, long range Xenos play yet again. Seems like Yellow's making making a ton of those. Beautiful shutdown onto the castle. Exactly what they need. A ripping Baron buff away from him. Yeah, so TP's into five. So that is a free donation, but Bullet Time gets channeled onto all five. It does basically no damage whatsoever. Moonfall gets an easy, easy kill. So and Sour Glass will buy her some time. Nunu doesn't have the damage to return the kill. They're gonna try to shut him down. They have to. He's their last member. They get the full ace. This is the full ace. It just takes a little bit of time. Elder Dragon up in 50. But they're gonna try to go for this push down mid lane. A miracle team fight once again, killing off the Cassidy and the rest of the team pop holes like dominoes. They've realized this in full force. Miracle catch after miracle catch. Honestly, MVP to the Leona for making that team fight happen. A beautiful max range Zenus play grabbing onto Riff, uh, grabbing onto Cassidy through Riff Walk. Oh, don't let the minion tank it. You need that minion to disable the back door. No, doesn't even matter. They might go for the GG push, but Cassidy is up in five, so this is. Strongly not recommended. He can just eviscerate your whole team again. They are going to smartly, I say, back off after ta uh, taking that inhibitor. So many Elder Dragon Pinks just came up from both teams. They know this is the final objective. Whoever takes this will likely be the winner. Neither team is going to give it up without a fight. It's going to be a very explosive battle in the pit. But the problem is, red team, they need to reset. They're not exactly healthy to do this. And blue team is already here. Their rotations are quick. Bowl of time, not up yet, but it will be up by the time Dragon drops the critical health as double force gets committed early, but there's no follow-up, so he's gonna be the first victim. Cassidy, where is he? He's unchecked, and now Red Team being wiped out. There's no hope left for them. Cassidy's gonna riff rock over and over to kill off the rest of their team. Can she actually get it? No, the Zion's Hourglass saving Cassidy's life, and GA is gonna be not enough to save the server. A clean 5 for 0 wipe. An improper reset means Blue Team gets the easiest team fight cleanup of all time. And that is gonna be the final push to end his game. A very antsy engage from Red Team. Honestly, I think it was due to a late reset. After killing the inhibitor, just back immediately and then run to Dragon. Would have yielded them a much better chance of winning that team fight. But regardless, starting that fight with half health on your Diana is just asking for this to happen. Kassadin gets the game of his life was a 1v5 pentakill to boot.